Hello, good morning. I hope that everybody is well and that you've had a good week. My week has been off the scale with excitement. So much has happened that um, my head has been whizzing around <laughs> with excitement. Um, Many of you will know that um, in the last couple of days I've been on a road trip um, and my road trip was to visit Elizabeth and Michael Feller. Now I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the Feller collection and the uh, Feller um, reference books. These two books are on the top of my all-time favourite uh, books and they are just absolutely jam-packed full of the most amazing needlework. Um, this collection is for me the greatest collection um, in the world, the greatest all-time collection in the world of um, samplers across um, various genres. Like there are um, other collections that focus on specific um, areas but this collection it just spans the history of samplers really really um, fabulous um, and to see these samplers in these books is um, wonderful but when you go to see them in real life they just your, your brain can't process the beauty of them and I've actually been very lucky to see this collection several times now but each time I go I feel so overwhelmed by the beauty of what you see and of course Liz and Mike they are so hospitable they always spoil you every time you visit and we had a fabulous time um, and I can't go into all the details at the moment but um, there are some very very exciting things happening for hands across the sea samplers um, that involve a few of the samplers in the Feller collection. Um, I just need a few more weeks um, to uh, process everything in my own mind and then I will share it with you. But we've all got something really, uh, well to me, very special to share. Um, so I'm sorry to tease, um, maybe I shouldn't have said anything but I'm so excited. <laughs> It's hard to keep secrets sometimes. Um, okay, so um, when you live in Cornwall, and especially as far to the southwest as we do, whenever you travel out of the county, it's always a long way. So I've had a very long road trip, and I used uh, the time in the car to uh, work on Anne Morrison. Now Anne Morrison is the stitch along to celebrate traditional stitches 20th anniversary and it started on December the 5th. Now I never sleep well in a hotel so I actually started stitching um, just gone midnight um, yesterday. Um, so I started probably about one two minute past yesterday morning and um, I probably stitched up until about half past three in the morning before switching the light off and then I stitched all the way down in the car and then I stitched last night. Um, the um, assignment for December was to stitch um, these bands up until this point. Now, um, because um, Anne on this section, she was so precise, everything is counted out correctly. I managed to uh, stitch this without looking at the booklet. Um, and when I put Anne onto, off my hoop and onto my Millennium frame when I got home last night, I realized that I'd been naughty and I had stitched this blue beautiful silvery blue dividing row. I'd started to stitch it and that is actually part of January's assignment but I couldn't leave it partly stitched so I did finish it off. So this is all of December plus that little row of January. I'm naughty but it wasn't um, deliberate. 
Anne is so, so pretty. And she's such um, a lovely stitch. She's um, very calming to work on and everything just flows so beautifully. Now the colours I was stitching with were... Um, these three um, were the colours that I should have been stitching with, uh, which I was, for um, December. And actually those are beautiful colours to be using for the month of Christmas. And um, my naughty row <laughs> was that beautiful blue. Isn't that gorgeous? So, so pretty. Anne Morrison, um, she will charm you when you start to stitch her. She is delightful. Now, um, just to share some tips with you, um, I am um, kneeling on my spools. When I started to stitch um, Anne, I stitched out the first leg of each cross stitch. And when I got to the 10th one, I did a full stitch. So I worked my way all the way across, knowing that that was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. And then I worked my way back. But um, last night, uh, Bertie posted um, in the Stitch Along group that what she did to make counting even easier was that she stitched out um, her zigzag line because then she was only counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven up, seven down, seven up, seven down. And uh, that saved her having to count all of these out. And this is one of the beauties of stitching in a stitch along. You get to uh, pick up lots of tricks and tips from other needle workers. And um, it's always good to have an open mind because we will all learn from each other. And that's the beauty of social media, that needle workers from around the world can congregate and share knowledge and tips and tricks. So um, if you haven't joined the Stitch Along and you would like to, um, there are a handful, and it is only a handful, of kits and charts left. These charts will not be reprinted. This is exclusive to traditional stitches. Stitch along for their 20th anniversary. Now, um, Janice and Rose, Janice is the store owner for traditional stitches and Rose is the stitch along leader. They posted a uh, floss tube um, introducing the stitch along and uh, their starts on Anne Morrison. So go along to YouTube, just search on traditional stitches and it's floss tube number one. Um, it's a really nice uh, floss tube to watch or to listen to as you stitch. Um, now, um, there was um, a question raised about Overa Soir's 103, and um, the question was asked about using um, Thread Heaven. Personally, I would never put anything on my silks. Silks glide through fabric so beautifully, you don't need it. And, you know, we don't know what the long-term effects of um, sort of thread conditioners will be on our work. I would like to think that my needlework will still be around um, in 100, 200 years time. But if I've put some sort of conditioner on my threads, there could be um, an effect on my threads, or it could even attract um, insects and bugs to munch on those threads. Now, when you use um, the 103, it handles differently to Overa Soir, uh, Soir d'Alger or to other silks. The majority of silks that we have been using up to now have been an S twist, but 103 is, as we would say in England, a Z twist, and in the States you will say a Z twist. Now, um, Basically, it's, it's the difference of how these um, silks are, uh, you know, spun together. And um, the 
best place that you can go to understand the technicalities of that um, is to Mary Corbett's site, Needle and Thread. Mary um, has written several um, articles on uh, the difference between the S, Z stroke, Z twist, and nobody can explain it better than Mary. So pop along to Needle and Threads, just search on Z or Z twist, and the articles will come up. Now, um, the one thing that you might find when you start using 103 because of the different twist is that your thread can tangle. Now this doesn't happen for everybody, it depends how you stitch and we all stitch slightly differently. But, um, now I wouldn't stitch um, with 103 on a needle this size, but I've got this needle because it was the biggest one I actually had because I wanted to show you a trick. Now what happens when we stitch and we put our needle down and we pull it out, we are, or some of us will inadvertently be twisting our thread because the needle will not pass down exactly like that. Um, you know, even just taking it like that you bring the needle uh, around slightly differently. So as we are stitching, and for me when I use my frame, I use my left hand on the top, my right hand on the bottom, so I'm stitching like this. And what I find is that I am working occasionally against the natural twist of the, um, of the thread. Um, so the one thing you can do is periodically drop your needle and let your thread untangle. But there's another easier way that you can overcome that twist. And basically what I do, as I bring my needle back up into this hand, as I pull it through, I just twist the needle in my hand. So as it's coming up, I'm just doing that. And those few little twists counteract the twist I've added as I've stitched that stitch. Now for me, um, I don't need to do that on every stitch. I just need to do that occasionally. And because I've stitched with 103 a fair bit now, um, I just don't have to think about it. I sense it, I can feel when my thread is twisting against itself. So that's how I just adjust it. Um, now I'm going that way somebody else might need to go the other way. So whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise depends how you handle your thread. Um, you just have to experiment and learn. So um, the obvious one is drop your needle, let it untangle, and the other tip is just to roll that needle in your fingers as you are pulling your needle up, it could even be as you're putting your needle down. We're all different. You find what works best for you. Now, I certainly wouldn't be stitching with a needle this size on 103. When you stitch with 103, now I did have these, yes. I like to use um, John James short beading tapestry point needle um, and most people will use size 10 and they would keep size 12 for something like Soir Safine but I love using the uh, 12s um, so I actually do use 12s for um, my 103 but most people would use the 10s. Um, John James aren't the only make of these type of needles. There will be other companies that make them. But in the UK, John James um, is based um, in the UK. In fact, I drove past where they were based um, on um, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, Saturday and Friday. Um, so these are really easy needles for us to get in the UK. Um, but there are others. So... Um, that's Anne Morrison. Um, I'll post a photograph of um, the work that I've done um, in the group and I'll post it on the Hands Across the Sea Samplers social media pages as well so that you can see. And I do hope that you're going to join us. Um, 
this sampler, um, I loved it the moment I saw the original. I loved reproducing her. Um, and when Angela sent her model back to me, I was just so blown away by it. I knew I wanted to stitch it as well. Um, now, we have got a new release. Last night, well, we released a very sweet little sampler. But before we get to Lily, I just wanted to talk to you about the Alexanders of Lynn Strathen. And this is a very special sampler as well. She's beautiful. And doesn't that water uh, white glass work so well? Look, you can see the reflection there. But... Um, that glass works so well uh, cutting down the reflection and when you look at that you wouldn't think there was glass there you literally have to touch it to realize there's glass now why I'm showing you this is that I had um, an email asking me a question and it was relating to uh, like the ladies just starting the project and it was relating to this bird and um, these um, alphabets and the question was, let me get the chart to show you, because I thought if one person's thinking about it, somebody else will be as well. Now, my charting program, I love using, but um, when I'm clicking um, away as I'm charting and, and marking a cross stitch, it only let me put a cross stitch uh, as, a, a, as a color block and a symbol in a square it won't let me straddle a square but little girls didn't always uh, put their cross stitches every two threads sometimes they place them on a uh, an even thread count not an even um, thread number so um, when um, this little girl stitched this bird and um, these two um, initials she stitched them in cross stitch but she didn't put them in line with the other cross stitches so when you see something like this in a hands across the sea samplers graph this is a cross stitch but it straddles uh, the normal position of a cross stitch it's a cross stitch one thread off count and I always show um, the numbers because um, it's hard to match uh, coloured lines up when there isn't a symbol. So that's what that is on the Alexanders of Strathen, and that's what it will be on um, other charts from Hands Across the Sea samplers as well. Okay, so let me show you um, Lily Thurza Edwards. Just the name Lily Thurza. It's, it, her name charmed me the moment I saw this sampler. Now, I haven't got my model to show you um, and I'll tell you the story about Lily. Last Saturday um, I could hear Lily whispering to me, stitch me, stitch me, because if you remember I showed you Lily a few weeks ago when she arrived and I said that we would reproduce her for Christmas 2021. Um, and I could just hear when I was in my study, stitch me, stitch me. And I thought, no, 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 you're next year. And Sunday morning, um, she was just shouting at me, stitch me, stitch me. So I gave in and um, I sat down and I charted a little bit of her and I started stitching. And then I, I stitched what I charted and I went back in my study. And over two s stitching sessions, I stitched, I charted and I stitched Lily. So um, my framers um, were open on um, Tuesday, so I drove over, I got some backing board, I drove home, I uh, laced her, took her back, um, and then um, I arranged with my photographer to uh, photograph her from the framers, and he did that yesterday. Um, so. I released her last night, but I haven't got the models to show you because I haven't collected her from the from the photographers yet. I shall do that on Tuesday, so I will show you my little model of Lily. Um, I stitched on 56 count, and it literally is the size of my hand. It's it, it's tiny. The original of Lily Thursa is stitched on 28 count with wool. 
Um, I stitched her with um, Overa Soir 103. I almost stitched her with wool, but I didn't have one of the colour of the wools um, in my stash. Um, I used fabric from um, Jukas of X Jew Designs, and this is her khaki, her marbled khaki, and it's a fabulous colour. It's slightly dirtied up, and it is a really, really great match for this um, for this sampler. It really captures. Um, the sampler so well and even the dirtiness of um, the over dyed linen it matches um, the uh, fabric that Lily stitched on so my colours well I was short of one of the colours on the um, wool um, but these are the colours that I used for stitching Lily um, and they are really great matches to the original. Um, these are the wool colours, um, bar I didn't have this colour. But if you want to stitch her with wool on 28 count, these are all in the Thread Legend uh, for Lily. Um, beautiful colours and they're Christmassy colours as well. Um, so... Um, Lily's uh, is a little gem because she is all cross stitch over um, two threads. Um, she is available on the Hands Across the Sea Samplers website to uh, instantly download and stitch. She uses hardly any thread. It's, it, this is such a small project. Um, when you stitch with the grey, uh, greeny blue and the um, olive, these two colours, you literally need two threads, uh, you know, two, two strands of thread. There are so few stitches. She is so, so pretty. Now, um, let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, she's only priced at eight uh, British pounds because she's, she, you know, she is a small one. Um, Cross stitch over two, so you can stitch on um, Ada, Linada, or Linen. Um, her stitch count is 96 stitches by 118. And on um, 56 count, which I stitched her on, she was 3.43 inches by 4.21. She's small enough to be an ornament to hang on your Christmas tree on that count. Um, if you stitched her on 28 count, uh, which the original was stitched on, um, she would be 6.86 inches by 8.43 inches, and 28 count linen is 14 count Ada. Um, so there are five colours, and in the download you have the Overa Soir 103, the Soir um, the fine um, wool de Busson from Overa Soir and you have DMC as well. Um, as I said I used um, marbled khaki from Jukas of X Jew Design and one of the great things about Jukas that she will dye her colours in any count. So um, when you go to her Etsy store, if she doesn't have the colour you want in the count you want, if you just email her, she responds to emails so quickly and she will just dye it and get it sent to you. Um, that's probably all about the supplies that you need. Um, with the download, you will get a two-page colour graph, a two-page black and white graph, and you will get a one-page colour and a one-page black and white uh, chart as well. Um, you could um, almost work uh, from the one page um, just by printing it, but the one pages, they are really designed for you to um, put on your uh, electronic device to stitch um, directly uh, from that. Um, that is the entire graph. She is um, 
a very, very quick stitch. You'll get this stitched in a weekend easily. Um, anyway, I hope that you enjoy her and um, I will share the model with you in my next video when I get to pick her up from the photographers. Um, oh, my work in progress. Now, um, Amy Fisher, she is charming. She really is. And she's growing. Um, so this is where I am at the moment. Um, I have the most beautiful rose um, to, to put in here, but I've been saving that because that's my treat uh, for when I finish doing the alphabet. And I did. I finished doing um, the little verse here. Uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I've always found that a very, very touching um, sentiment from the Bible. Um, and I put her name in and her age. And last night, I just ran out of time. Uh, no, sorry, not last night. Um, Thursday night was the last night I worked on this. And I just ran out of time um, with the, um, the date there. And I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Um, but she's really coming along and her colours are just delightful. Very, very pretty sampler. And it's really nice um, to keep your interest going, to stitch different styles of uh, projects and not do the same thing all the time. I think that um, 2020 has been such a stressful year for all of us that to take on a complex um, project it's almost too much for me at the moment with um, everything else you know but we have to think about that's been happening in the world this year I will be so glad when we get back to normal and um, hopefully we will get back to some sort of normality very soon we're out of um, national lockdown now and in Cornwall we're actually tier one we're the only county on mainland uh, England that's in tier one. I think the only other place in tier one is like the Isle of Wight or the Isle of Man and the Scilly Isles. Um, and when we travelled, um, normally um, when we go um, up the motorway, we tend to stop um, in Bristol at a, um, a sort of a big shopping area. It's like a big shopping mall. Um, it's called Cribs Causeway and we would have done our Christmas shopping but Bristol's actually in tier three so we wouldn't even stop at the services on the motorway in that tier three section um, and where we stayed was tier two and um, it was noticeable the different restrictions between tier one and tier two. Anyway, um, it'll be lovely to get back to normal and um, I'm sure we will soon. Hugo, um, he is a delight and Bertie Boo is such a wonderful um, big brother to him. Um, we're having such, such fun with him and when we got back yesterday we had such a lovely welcome from both of them. Um, we're now going to um, take them out for a walk and um, we're doing a socialisation walk for Hugo. Um, it was a frosty morning this morning. It was so unusual to wake up and see a frost on the beach, on the sand. Um, but the sun is coming out and starting to shine, so it's going to warm up a little bit. So we're going to take Bertie out, wrapped up warm in his coat, and um, hopefully we'll meet um, lots of other doggies and children and people, and he'll get to see... Um, like children riding their bikes and playing and um, a little bit of traffic. Where we live, we get very little traffic, so it's important for him to get to see um, cars and motorbikes and buses and lorries, what you call trucks. Um, yeah, it's great fun, but it's taking a lot of time away from me to work, but I don't mind that. Um, anyway, enjoy Lily. Enjoy um, the Alexanders of Lynn Stratham and most certainly please enjoy Anne Morrison. Um, I know that many of you are. Um, until next week, have a good week, take care and please stay safe. Bye-bye.